Oh, I'm live. Hey guys, it's Richard and welcome back to Grafting Dragon Fruit. Tonight we are doing another live, but this time we have two more flowers of my creation. This is the Asunta 4 Cross with Red Laverne. Um, I did a live on this one a couple days ago. It was only one flower and that is here actually. Um, but now we have two more flowers. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to show you guys what's my process of creating a new hybrid. So I thought this was a good opportunity to show you guys my whole process, what I do, what my thinking process is, and how I do them. All right, so we're just gonna give it about another five minutes to let more people join in. And then uh, once they're in, we can go ahead and start collecting pollen. Uh, we'll select what varieties I wanna cross it with and then pollinate them. Uh, so in the meantime, let's just answer some questions. If you guys got any, this is the time to go ahead and ask them and I'll answer them the best I can. All right, guys. I got my laptop here so I can see you guys. All right. Uh, Lex Rupter, woo! And woo back to you too. Julia Tang, hey Richard. Hey Julia, how are you? Um, hope I'm not keeping you guys up too late. That's why I'm doing it on a weekend. So uh, anybody that doesn't have work, thanks for joining. Dennis from Canary Islands, hello. From Canary Islands. Okay, we got our first question here. Where do you buy Dr. Earth Flower Girl? I can't seem to find any local to me and I live down here in Menifee. I buy them at DrEarth.com. I find that that was the cheapest price um, when I bought it. On Amazon, it was about $10 or $15 more. So just go directly to their website, DrEarth.com. They have a store uh, tab on there and click on there. I buy the 50 pound bag because I have so many dragon fruit and I use that pretty quickly. Uh, the amount I put in is one cup per 20 gallon pot. So if you're going to try to buy the Flower Girl Bud and Bloom, uh, get it on DrEarth.com, okay? Okay, next question. Do you grab the hybrid seedlings to get mature plants faster? Lex Rupter, yes, I do. And that's why I have new varieties almost every year because it only takes one season for them to grow and the very next season, they're going to fruit. So all of my hybrids, all of my seedlings that I create, I graft them onto a mature rootstock so that way I can get fruits within one year. Hi guys, hey everyone, thanks for joining in. All of the new people that are coming in, welcome. We're doing a cross-pollination tonight and we're gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be showing you how I create new hybrids. So it's been a very special day today. Uh, Freddie Sorto, do you sell cuttings? So this is a very common question that I get asked. I'm almost there, you guys. Um, I'm creating a website and it's called Grafting Dragon Fruits with an S.com. Uh, we're working on getting that launched. So once it's ready, I'll make the big announcements. I'll go live to let you guys know that the, uh, that's where I'll be selling cuttings. So that's coming very soon. So keep an eye on that. Christina Pham. Hey, Christina. How are you? One of my biggest fans and contributors to my group. Love you guys. Uh, Yeri Dennis, my yellow dragon fruit Pelora Colombiana are not growing any growing, any growing any tips. Um, so that was a, a pretty hard question to read, but I think you might be knowing that it's not growing any tips as it's not growing any branches or not growing any buds. If you can clarify that for me, that'd be great. That makes hybrid creation so much faster. Yes, grafting dragon fruit seedlings does make it go by so much faster. So I recommend you guys do it. And my channel is dedicated to all of that info, grafting dragon fruit. I can't wait to see the flower, Steven fam. Yeah, Steven, me neither. If my plants have 10 buds plus multiple branches, should I pluck them off many or let them abort? So Noah, that's a very good question. I'm the type that knows what I want. And uh, I usually keep an eye out on the buds. If there's a branch with four buds on there, and let's say, two or three of them, it's really bigger than the rest. I'll take off about two of the small ones and leave about two to three per branch. Um, I feel like having four or more on there is, even three is a lot. So I try to keep a minimum of two to three buds per branch and I space them out so that way they have room to grow. Um, if they're too close to each other, they're gonna compete for space and sometimes they'll grow not as large because they're right next to each other. So if you can, pick the buds that are the smallest first and then find them um, a little bit far from each other and then keep those ones on. All right, we're gonna answer a couple more questions, then we're gonna go ahead and jump into the cross-pollinating. All right, guys? All right, let me pick some, let me read some questions. Some of my fruits were getting small, but the variety I planted were not good and got big fruits earlier. All right, that sounds good. Put me on the list. Good luck, yo. Freddie, all right. Have you ever tried to cross dog tail cactus with dragon fruit? 
I have not tried that because I don't grow anything else besides dragon fruit, but I have seen other people do it and have success. So definitely it's possible. All right. Oh, okay. Let's go ahead now. Why do I feel like Richard's gonna make an as soon as eight right now? <laughs> you know what? I'm creating so many things. I don't know what I'm creating. Eventually, <laughs> we'll have a as soon as eight, but as soon as seven, just budded. So that's a video I gotta make for you guys too. Okay, how often do you water your plants? Okay, last question from Tyler in the wind. How often do I water my plants? In the winter time, I water them at least once every two to three weeks, sometimes even a month because it's so cold, the water just stays in there. And during the winter, rot and uh, fungus happens very easily. So I try not to keep them too damp in the winter. But during the summer, like right now, when it's really hot, I'm watering every two to three days. What I do is I go in here, I grab the soil, I squeeze it, and it falls loose like this, then it's ready to water. But if you can clump it and it stays a clump, then you're good. So I need to water this probably tomorrow morning because look at this, it's not staying no more. Another uh, tip is if you stick your finger in two inches deep, and it's dry two inches, then it's time to water. So that's a good indication. So if you're very worried about your dry fruit, check the soil, like here, feel them, and eventually you're gonna get used to when they need water or just time it every two to three days on very hot days. And a good like marker would be every three to five days water. Okay, right, guys, but in the summertime, it dehydrates really quick because these pots, they get hot and it evaporates the water. Okay. We'll answer some more questions at the end, but let's go ahead and start the cross-pollination process. And then if you guys have any questions during the whole process, save them for the end. I'll ask you guys again. Hold on, give me one second, guys. Throughout the video, ask him to give you a thumbs up. Okay. All right, you guys, we are now gonna start the cross-pollination process. And now, uh, if you guys are enjoying this video, please give me a thumbs up. There's a like button right on this video. Please hit that like button. I really appreciate all the support, you guys. Love you guys all. And I know you guys will always do it because you guys love me, right? <laughs> all right, guys. Okay, so we have two tonight. I can now create two different hybrids. So we're gonna use, both of these are sterile. So I don't have to worry about taking out the anthers. The anthers are these down here. If this, if this was self-fertile, I know I'm gonna ruin this beautiful flower by moving it, but this is for educational purposes. If this flower was fertile, all of these anthers here would pollinate, th pollinate this flower, but because I know it's sterile, it's not gonna happen, so I don't have to remove it. But if it was self-fertile, I would take scissors and I will actually cut all of that to remove them. Just in case bees start to fly in here and they touch that pollen and they accidentally pollinate this, it will, st it will contaminate the, the, the fertilization and then it's gonna get both of those pollen in there. Um, another thing I do is I take a little net bags, fruit bags with little holes, it's like a net, and I'll tie it overnight so that way no pollinator accidentally goes to another flower and cross pollinate it. So after I finish with all this, I'll run into my garage, find those and then put it on. Um, you guys probably won't see me doing it because we'll end that before that happens, but I'll update you guys on that. Okay, so my first flower that I wanted to cross it with was Natural Mystic. Why they wanted to use Natural Mystic? Natural Mystic is a self-fertile variety. I'm trying to bring self-fertility back into the gene pool because there is so many sterile fruits out there, but not everybody knows how to cross-pollinate. I want to make it so that it's easy for everyone to grow fruit. So if it's self-fertile, it has a beautiful flower, and it fruits on its own, that's what makes it a very attractive. So I'm going to go ahead and get those, those pollen, and we're going to go ahead and pollinate it, okay? Let's go. Oh. Check out this bloom, you guys. This is a Sunta 5. There are six flowers blooming. I did a time lapse on this, so I'll post this up for you guys to see the very next day, okay? Um, but man, smells so good and looks so beautiful. There's a lot going on tonight. Uh, it's been warm, so the dragon fruits have been blooming. We have purple haze here. So I might use purple haze for that second flower. Why? Because I just love the taste of purple haze, even though it's a self-sterile variety. I just love the, the flavor of it so much and they grow nice, big and round, sometimes really big fruits. So I might do this, but if my thinking changes during the process, then I'll see, because I've got to see what other out is there already. I also have Hannah. This is Hannah here. Hannah is also a self-fertile variety. So it either could be Hannah or it could be purple haze. I'll let you decide. What do you guys think? Should I cross-pollinate one with Hannah 
or should I cross pollinate one with purple haze? I'll read the comments before I do it. So if you guys can decide, let me know in the comments and I'll go, go to that and I'll, and I'll do what you guys do, okay? And this is Pink Panther. Love Pink Panther because also another self throat variety. And they are a great universal pollinator. So if I wanted tonight to use this pollen and pollinate all of these self-sterile or even my other fertile varieties, this would work. Pink Panther makes, produce a lot of pollen and you can collect so much of this to use in all your flower and have enough to freeze and store for another night. Okay, all right. So here we are with Natural Mystic. So if we, I'm just gonna give you guys a little rundown on Natural Mystic. This is a really, really good fruit. It's a red flesh and the flower is self-fertile and self-pollinating. And let me show you guys what I mean by self-fertile and self-pollinating, okay? Self-fertile means that the pollen will make fruits if you use its own pollen. That's why it's self-fertile. Self-pollinating means that the anthers are close enough that it can pollinate itself with its own pollen. So a lot of varieties, you guys will see that this anther here is so far from the, um, tube here and it makes it hard for them to touch the stigma but because these anthers are so close you can literally shake this flower and the and the pollen will touch the stigma right here because they're so close and that's what they mean when they say self-pollinating and self-fertile those two terms are completely different self-fertile and self-pollinating is two different terms self pollinate means that it can self-pollinate itself because it's close enough to touch the other Part, which is the anthers with the stigma and self fertile means that it's fertile to itself so you can use its own pollen let me just show you guys another example of a self sterile and why it wouldn't work before we collect that pollen so you guys get a really good understanding so when you guys make your hybrids you know exactly what you're doing so purple haze is self sterile and also not self pollinating if you guys look at the stigma look how far this tube is from the anthers there's no way that it's gonna to touch each other. You're gonna to have to pan pollinate. And that's why they have another term called hand pollinate. So self pollinating and hand pollinating goes hand in hand. If it's not self pollinating, then you gotta go out there to do the hand pollination. All right guys, that's a little bit of terminology for you guys to understand the process. So when you guys are out there, you guys can tell all your friends what you're doing. They're gonna think you're an expert just like me. All right. Ooh, the light's off. Okay. Good thing I have my flashlight here, guys. We're gonna go ahead now and collect this pollen into my bowl. I normally would use this, but because I use this for every other flower, it makes it contaminated with other pollen. So I'm gonna only use this if I need to collect pollen that I don't care about, but I don't wanna contaminate, so I'm gonna use my old method. I'm gonna put my bowl in here. And we are gonna shake all that pollen out. And this is how I collect pollen when I wanna cross pollinate something. And give it a nice shake to make sure that everything's out. And here we are. So I'm very satisfied with this. Okay. All right, guys, we are gonna take a quick intermission. Give me about three minutes. We're gonna plug in the light. It just died on us right now. And it's really dark out here and you guys can't see anything. So give us one second, okay? I'm gonna grab that light and I'll be right back, guys. Hang out for a second. Get the charger. The light died on us. No. Where the fuck is the charger?
<laughs> All right, we're back. Okay, guys, thank you for being so patient. We're back, our light's working again. <laughs> All right, so here I have the natural mystic pollen. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this pollen and we're gonna pollinate one of these flowers. And then that's how you cross pollinate a dragon fruit to create a new hybrid. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this pollen, natural mystic. There you go. Turning on my light to really see that stigma. And because I have so much pollen and I wanna make sure this pollination is successful, we're just gonna put a lot on it. Cake it up with you if you can. <laughs> and that's it, okay? All right, that was awesome. Okay, so that's how you cross pollinate a dragon fruit. You take pollen from a variety that you think it would be interesting to make a good cross with. You bring it to your sterile or your mother and then you cross pollinate him. Oh, let me see what's going on with this. That's weird. Huh. Okay guys, so this is some information I'd like to share with you guys. So that way when you're making your hybrid, you guys know this information. So mother will give an influence of 60% to your hybrid and father will give you 40% of influence to the offspring. So when you're creating a hybrid, you gotta choose the mother wisely because 60% of its traits is gonna get passed on to the daughter and only 40% from the father. So the natural mystic I just use right now, only 40% of those traits is gonna get into um, my new hybrid here and then 60% is gonna be from the mother. So if I wanted to take on traits from another variety, then I would switch it to be the mother. The father only has a 40% influence. So hope that information um, is good for you guys. So that way when you create them, you know what to do. Okay, so next one, this is what I do. I've already contaminated my brush. It already has pollen on it. My bowl has pollen in it. So I can't use that brush anymore. Cause if I do, then I'm gonna accidentally cross pollinate it with a natural mystic. So this is what I do. We're gonna go to, actually, what, did you guys choose Purple Haze or Hannah yet? Let me check. Purple Haze. Uh, let's see. Purple Haze, Hannah, Purple Haze. So it looks like majority is Purple Haze. I don't see any other Hannahs in here. So we'll go with Purple Haze, all right. Let me show you guys another way I use to cross pollinate and you guys would think this way is just so funny, but it's going to be so simple and you guys are going to laugh at me. So let's go to purple haze. Okay. So here's purple haze. So my brush and my bowl is contaminated with the other pollen. I can't reuse it. I have to clean it really well, but because I'm already out here and you can do this too. If you're cross pollinating different varieties, this is a way that you can get it done really quick. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna pinch these and take, take some of these, just like that. I have the anthers here. Nothing else is touching it, so we're not contaminating it. We're gonna bring it straight to the other Asunta 4 cross red laverne, and we're gonna cross pollinate it with this purple haze. All right, guys? Let's move this. Turn on my light. I like to turn on my light because I like to shine at the stigma. The light helps me see the pollen. So we're gonna take the purple haze and this is all we're gonna do. And sometimes I'll just leave it in there, just like that. And whatever is on my hands, go ahead and just dab onto that. Just like that. <laughs> and now it's cross pollinated with purple haze. I didn't have to use the same brush and same bowl, so there's no worries about contamination. And I literally can just wipe off my hands like this, make sure it's really dry, and go do that with another variety. So that's a quick way to do it if you don't have any tools and you just wanna be very fast with it. So that's how you cross pollinate, you guys. Now, 
we just have to wait and see if it actually takes. Just because we cross-pollinate it, we don't know if it's going to be successful yet because what if it doesn't um, like the pollen that I just gave it? What if it's not compatible with each other? So we're going to have to wait five to 10 days to see if this fruit sets. If it sets, then you know the fertilization process, the pollination process was successful. And this base here is going to start turning to a fruit. And then in that fruit, you're going to have both of these genetics, purple haze and the new hybrid within that fruit. We're going to take those seeds, grow those seeds. And once it sprouts into little seedlings, that's when I start to graft them and I'll do a seedling graft. And then within one year, you're going to have a new hybrid. So each individual seed is going to have a different variation. So there's thousands of seeds in there. So there's going to be thousands of different variation of purple haze and this hybrid that I created. So that's the super cool part. Not all of those seeds are going to be the same. They're all going to be subtly different. Just like when you have kids, your daughter is going to be one. Your other daughter is going to be different. And then you have a son just like dragon fruit is just like us, you guys. So yeah, that is how you cross pollinate to create new hybrids. Hope you guys enjoy the lesson. And now we'll start answering some questions. Okay, guys. All right, let's see what we have. Okay, Steven Fan, we had the technical difficulties. Yes, we did, but we fixed that and the light's still kind of going crazy. Uh, what are the goals when you cross species? Do you prioritize flavor, flower, aesthetic, or commercial potential? So for a uh, Moo, Moo Milken Nerf Herder, <laughs> cool name. Anyways, my goal for cross-pollinating is to, for my process, I like to create a variety that has a colored flower that's self-fertile and self-pollinating. So that's why you saw me using Natural Mystic. I was trying to get those traits to be on this one, probably bring the stigma closer and get the anthers to be closer so they can self-pollinate each other and hopefully the pollen work on itself. It's a long road. You just don't know which possibility can happen from any seed. So that's why you have to graft like four or five of them. And hopefully one of them is self-fertile. But if they aren't, you're going to have to just keep grafting until you find that one. It's a process of elimination, but that's called phenol honey. And that's what I'm basically doing. Trying to find that specific variety that's just going to change the world. All right. Next question. Pedro Moon as Hannah. Oh man, you're a little too late. I already pollinated with purple haze, but I do have one more flower. And if I do have another Hannah or I collect Hannah pollen tonight, I'll probably do that cross. A5 white flower is Princess Sansa, reviewed by Kim Fan. Princess Sansa, um, I haven't seen that one. I don't, um, the only other white A5 I have is called Sunset Sherbert, and that's the one with orange skin and red flesh. How do you clean your brush? Oh, so how I clean my brush is I wash it with water, I run it underwater, I wash it really clean and I make sure all of the pollen is off and I just let it air dry. And then when it's dry the next day, I just reuse it. But the thing, the, the only part about that is you can't reuse it that same day because if it's wet, you're gonna damage your pollen. So make sure if you guys are washing it, let it dry overnight or have multiple brushes. I have about three brushes that I rotate when I do this kind of breeding. Tyler Newman, thanks for the great live stream. No problem guys. And there's gonna be more to come. And again, thank you for joining. And if you guys haven't hit that like button yet, go ahead and hit that like button, you guys. It's right down, right below me. Love you guys. All right, thank you for answering my question. Of course, that's why we're doing this. I'm hoping to do more of these lives so I can answer you guys' questions on the spot. It's so hard for me to go back to my videos to answer those comments because you guys can see that I get so many questions, it's hard to answer them all. My whole day can disappear if I just sit there and answer everyone's questions. So these uh, little lives here are awesome because I can answer your questions right on the spot, especially during dragon fruit season. I'm pretty sure you guys have so much questions when you know seasons is going on right now. Okay, let's answer about two to three more questions, then we're gonna call it a night, okay guys? Um, have a question, got so ox dragon, ox dragon fruit, have a good question. Got seedlings from the tray inside Mr. Valdivia's house. Are those A7? Um, it depends what tray you got it from Edgar Valdivia. In his greenhouse, he has a lot of seedlings. Uh, the only way to know is you got to go there or if you have his number, call Edgar, um, then ask him yourself because Edgar has so, so many seedlings in trays everywhere, like literally everywhere. Um, sorry, I couldn't help you with that one, but uh, ask Edgar, he would be the only person to know. All right, super cool to see this live back to back. Oh yeah, 
I'm glad you guys are liking it. I mean, all the feedback helps. Um, every time you guys uh, give me feedback, it helps me decide what to do. And if you guys like it, I can do more. So thank you for all the feedback. Really appreciate it. Oh, Mar Loka, I got, we got an answer. I have a queen of the night dragon fruit. I just cross pollinate with a unknown dragon fruit. I am starting. I'm just starting. So thank you for the info. You're very welcome. And queen of the night is um, a cacti. And so this should work. So I'm hoping that you have great success with that. Um, if you can keep me updated, I'm very interesting. Those are two very unique species. Very cool. All right, Rich, I have a sunset sherbet that has been aborting all three flushes this season. They get uh, about four inches long and then abort. Have you seen that before? So Jesse, yes, that actually happens to my sunset sherbet too. It's just so random. You know, sometimes when it's so hot, that's one reason it can abort. I've noticed when we have those really, really hot heat, like 90, 95, it kind of just like fries them and then they get weak and then they fall off. Um, if you don't have luck and it keeps falling off, try using some flora, um, not flora, but a bloom booster. So that way you're giving it enough nutrients to have it strong enough to hold onto it. But if it doesn't have what it needs and it's lacking the nutrients that it, it, it needs to provide for these buds, because when, they, when they're having buds, it takes a lot of energy. It's like growing a baby for nine months and then having that blooming process is like basically giving birth. You know, um, so give it its energy, give it all the vital nutrients, and then it'll, the, in, in theory, it should help you keep your, your buds. Okay, guys, so I use uh, Bud and Bloom Floronova, uh, not Floronova, but Bud and Bloom Dr. Earth Flower Girl. So that one's really good. Or I use Verm Vermistera cast, uh, Earthworm Casting. So Vermistera is an organic one. It's so easy. They have a tea where I just mix it in a five gallon bucket with water, and you only need about one cup of it in there. And what it does is it has all of those good bacteria and it's gonna start inoculating your soil and give it a living soil so that way they stay healthy. All right, see here, uh, much love from Arkansas. Wish I could meet Edgar Vadil someday. Oh yeah, he's such a great man, but he is getting older. Um, I just had a FaceTime call with him today and then he just updated me. He's actually not guarding as much as he would like to because he has a knee injury and he's gonna get surgery next week. So we're praying for Edgar that he has a speedy recovery and that his surgery goes well. So everybody give your prayers to Edgar Valdivia that his surgery goes well, okay? All right, let's go for two more questions. I'm gonna read this through to see which ones are good questions that everyone can benefit from and then we'll answer those and then call it a night, guys. Let's see, in your opinion, does tipping branch really stimulate? Oh, this is a really good one. In your opinion, does tipping branch really stimulate bud production? Yes, it does. And let me tell you why. When you break the branch, there is this hormone called oxen where it's giving it growth and it's sending all of that energy in there. But the minute you break it, that hormone stops and it sends out other signals to the other nodes. And if it's during flowering season, then it's gonna actually produce buds. So what I like to do is I'll break the tips of the growing dragon fruit the, the, it's gonna swell up, that branch is gonna swell because it has no longer energy to keep moving forward. So it grows an offshoot. And if you give it some bud fertilizer, like a bloom fertilizer, it's gonna trick it into producing a bud. And I use this trick religiously every season and it always works for me. I have buds everywhere, every time I do it. So definitely recommend that. It definitely works. Okay. Tyler Hall, how long after planting a cutting could we expect fruit? It takes one year for you to plant a cutting and grow into a fruit. There is actually an episode on my uh, YouTube channel called How to Grow Dragon Fruit from Cutting to Fruit. And I go through the whole process into a fruit. So you definitely check that one out. All right, Shadow Legend, hello. James Burnett, Richard, I can send you mature cuttings of my Season Soon 2 X Sugar Dragon. Um, yeah, if you want to send it to me, I can graph a couple and see how it does. But I recommend you do the same too. You should graph them and question here. Hey Richard, long time lurker here. Me and my fiance Linda started planting American Beauty dragon fruit. Thanks to you. Thanks for all the tips. Thanks, Hung. I, every time I read that message, message, and no matter how many times I read it, it still warms up my heart, you know, like to spread the knowledge of dragon fruit it, freely. I love it. And that's why I, I, I just spit game to you guys all day, every day. And I don't hide anything from you guys. Anything I learn, I share with you guys. Anything new that I learn, I share with you guys. So there's nothing that I'm hiding from you guys, I promise. Whatever I'm doing here, you guys are seeing face to face.
Okay, so tip the younger branches. Yep, tip the younger branches. Tip any branches that has a tip. If you think that it's, uh, it's season starting, tip them and you will see flowers. All right, guys, thank you. You guys, and if you guys haven't hit that like button yet, remember to hit that like button because it helps me and um, it gives me fun. So then that way I can buy more soil, plant more dragon fruit, get more pots, more stick, more tape, all of that good stuff. So that way I can keep making dragon fruit content. And uh, thank you very much for joining the live today, guys. It's so fun hanging out with you guys. Hope to do some more of it. Um, if you guys have questions, we'll save it for the next live and I'll answer them all, okay? I hope you guys have a wonderful night and I hope you guys learned something new today. And if you guys did, don't forget, forget to hit that like button. And if you guys haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next live or in the next video. Have a good night. Bye, guys.